So the new Perfection Ballet Band, uh, Cargo Caddy Pro from VW, um, Series 5 I believe, uh, forced to sell the Mercedes Vito, uh, which up to this point had been a fantastic band, but of course due to ULES, living inside ULES, um, it wasn't compliant, so I had to sell reluctantly. However, um, this has been a superb experience so far. Uh, must thank the Marshalls Motor Group, and mainly Ryan at the Loughton uh, Van Centre, who um, were very proactive in coming forward in supplying the van to me, uh, and very helpful, and continue to be helpful with various queries uh, and advice that I've had with uh, some optional extras, etc. Um, Porsche Portsmouth, a company that I've worked for quite a lot in the past for their sales vehicles, um, very kindly supplied me with the number plates. Um, Wayne at Scientific, a sign writer who I've known for many years, 32 plus years, uh, has sign written all of my bands, uh, and most recently this one. Um, it has a carbon fibre overlay on a reflective silver background. So you probably can't see it on the video, but it really kind of pops at the night time when headlights shine in it. Uh, a company called Work and Play Customs in Hertfordshire. Uh, I approached them a couple of really skillful engineers and carpenters with the task of equipping this van. Now, given that um, I'm having to reduce quite dramatically uh, what I'm able to carry, or at least my initial thought was that I'm going to have to reduce what I carry, um, I've actually made, been able to make a huge um, space saving by reducing the water tank. So the Mercedes ran a 500 litre water tank. This has a bespoke 250 litre water tank which is situated centrally in the van. I'll show you in a moment. Uh, and it's also upright and baffled. Um, so that in itself has saved me a huge amount of space. And with that space, we've been able to uh, modify this van to accommodate all of the equipment that I carried in the Mercedes, and more, to be fair. However, in the Mercedes, there were some cupboards in there that you remember the previous video, that I, I never used to use the equipment that was in there. I used to lift it up and think, oh no, I don't need that one, and go to another. Um, so that sort of equipment, um, since having PVHQ, I've been able to uh, keep all of those things in there and keep the uh, equipment in this stand to a minimum but I have actually found that I've now got spare room. So um, I ordered the van with side opening doors both sides uh, for convenience. And as we open up, you'll see firstly the Fenelic plywood, um, very good quality, highly compressed plywood. Longevity on this stuff is extreme. The Mercedes, which is seven years old, doesn't look a day old to be fair. Um, the tank sits behind this very well made shelf, um, it goes to about here, behind this wood what you can't see is the strapping, the screwing and the securing of that tank so um, worst case scenario I have an accident, uh, what I didn't want was to get met by a 250 kilogram barrel of water uh, so absolute um, Dominance was the security of that tank. They've done a fantastic job. I wanted it elevated as well because my jet wash is gravity fed, so there's no water pump in here. Uh, the jet wash uh, has gravity fed water going into it. So I thought to myself, um, aside from the centre of gravity, I appreciate that, but the tank is high up, as high as it can go. It's up to the roof line. Um, because it's high up, it gives me under tank storage. So I have compartmentation here and underneath for toolboxes, machine polishing bag, etc. Um, I just draw your attention to the skill that has gone into this cut around the original bulkhead of the Mercedes, uh, sorry, of the VW. Um, the, the, I, I can't myself imagine how, how, how long that took. It must have been templated two or three times uh, to get it that precise. Um, under here, we have pipe work from the tank. I deliberately ordered the tank, uh, bespoke built, like I said. I've got four outlets. I've got one at the front, one at the back, equally the other side, so that whatever way the van is pitched, I will always get a good feed of water. And I also thought that four outlets, rather than just one going into the tank, would mean that that jet wash is never hunting for water. Um, so the pipework is nicely concealed under here. I have storage for 
the regularly used bottles, trigger sprays. Um, and if I just step aside, you'll see here, we've got two handles. Now these drawers come out, and I've got storage inside for what I'm using it for, the polishing pastes. They're both sides. I mean, look at that precision there. The way that was made, and they're soft shut. Equally, the one underneath it. For the same contents, but again, soft shut. And once again, draw your attention to these, the hex shape of the phenolic plywood, which is an impression in the wood. Uh, these are actually cut from two separate pieces of wood, purely so that the diameter of the blade didn't spoil the hex shape. So you'll see that that is completely matching. A solid bulkhead separates the middle of the van to the rear, which we'll go to now. Two side opening doors, sorry, two rear opening doors. Tail lift was an option, um, although I chose to this, the, these two side, uh, these two doors on this particular van. Um, you do have the function to open them, obviously check them behind, make sure you're not going to hit anything. And then once again, more really superb craftsmanship in the back here. Storage space similar to the Vito. Cupboarded for various things to be put away. Nice and deep, as far back as the um, centre of the van, which is where I've gained an awful lot of storage space for that purpose. Um, the inverter has come from the Mercedes. Um, different in that I haven't chosen for the van alternator to charge the battery bank, the marine batteries which are in here. I've chosen for the option of plugging the, them in to charge them up and driving around with them fully charged. I had a few issues with the Mercedes. Uh, the alternator burnt out, so they then fitted a Sprinter alternator, which is what they used in their ice cream van, converted vans. A lot, a lot um, bulkier output for that alternator. However, occasionally it blew light bulbs and I felt there was getting some interference with the radio as well. Maybe it, it was not related, but I was convinced that it was. So this particular van, although it has its own battery bank, it doesn't self-charge. It has to be manually charged. Cables are very neatly packed away in that cupboard area there. At the back of this compartment here is where the, where the battery banks are, packed away neatly behind the wood. And I've even got a nice little spot there for mobile phone. Um, which is plugged into USP plug ports either side. Don't know whether you can catch that, but either side here, I've got my plug sockets. Um, and the real uh, skill as well in the build of this vehicle is the jet wash. Um, the jet wash is plumbed in directly to the tank, but it comes out on this drawer here. Permanently plumbed in, permanently on, watertight and sealed. Um, pull start cartridge jet wash, petrol. I've had a few of these now, particularly good machine. Um, it was cut, the framework, the cage as they call it, was cut to fit into the compartment because I wanted symmetry in terms of that space and this space rather than it being offset ever so slightly. Uh, for that reason, they needed to cut the cage to make it fit. Fortunately, there was enough room to fit around the actual motor itself. Hoses, etc., are here, but all very neatly able to store away in that area, out of sight. And those runners will accommodate 100 kilograms of weight, which is way more than are actually on it. Moving to the other side. Very similar to the other side of the van, as you can imagine. Again, remembering that the tank is elevated, gives me under tank storage. I've got my creeper here, which you'll remember from the Vito. And a bag very neatly fits on there. I've got a clothes rail here for the hanging of um, my drying towels and a sight glass for the tank. You'll see if I rock the van, you can just see the shadow of the water line. So 250 litre tank, there's probably about 125 litres in there. You do feel it in the weight of the van, but it's not excessive. The van is still well below its carriage weight. Um, LEDs, 
not stuck to the carpet, but actually tailored into the carpet under here. They're wired into the, uh, the van's own interior lighting system. So if the doors are left open, they will go out eventually, but very easily and simply to get them back on. I'll allow the soft shut doors to close and then reopen, the lights come on again. Again, more storage here. For polishing pots or polishing bottles. And this here is for the pipework which I described to you over the other side of the van. These are the other two outlets to the tank. But in all, I hope you'll agree that this is quite an engineering feat to get everything in this van as neat as it is. No screws, no drill lines, no nails, no um, adhesive, glue, sealant, nothing is visible. A real credit to the craftsmanship of Work and Play Customs in Hertfordshire. It took them two months. Um, I didn't see the van from start to finish, so I had no input as such physically, although we did do lots of drawings and have lots of conversations about where things need to be. But on the whole, incredibly pleased. Uh, and finally, uh, window tinting was done by Wayne at Scientific. There you have it, the new VW Cargo Caddy Pro. And hopefully, all things being well, it will last me for a very long time. Um, and I'll enjoy it for its future as much as I have in the last few months. Thanks.